Hello and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Matt Tardiff and I work primarily as a freelance animator and teach game animation under the game art department at Full Sail University. So now we're going to talk about animation layers. So animation layers within Maya you know, sound pretty self-explanatory and it kind of is, um, but it's just scratching the surface of what it's capable of producing. The main uses that I have for them are adding texture, iterations, and making changes maybe on a small scale to big scale as far as like making a pose change or um, individual object changes or appendage changes or whatever, I'm just changing the pose. But the main thing I use, like to use it for are adding texture because I can get into adding 30 or 50 layers of little changes here and there. So they all kind of go into play, but regardless I'll kind of I'll talk about them as I start to work through it so without further ado let's go so now we need to create the animation layer in order to do that we have to go over to the channel box layer editor behind display render and then we find the anim tab so click on the blue ball and we'll automatically get a base animation and an anim layer you could just delete the animation layer so we can just take a look at the base animation. So by default, everything that's in our scene goes into the base animation layer, even if it's stuff that we haven't keyed or probably will, most likely will not key. It all goes into the um, base animation. And base animation is just there to support all the layers that we create. So nothing changes as far as King's concerned. We still treat it as if it were anything else, almost as if it wasn't there. Now I'm going to Make sure everything's selected, and click on Create again. So now all we're going to get is animation layers all the way up. And a couple of things I'll point out about right-clicking on here is that this is where you can change the layer mode from additive to override, and additive is what is set by default. This is also where you can add objects if you forgot to add a, like say if you created a, a, a layer for the arm and forgot to add the shoulder, this is how you would do it. Um, you can also same thing. You can remove selected objects, extract selected objects, which will actually come into play with looking at the base animation layer, and merge. And that's exactly, that's it. Delete, obviously, and delete empty layers. But that's all I use it for. And we'll get into the keying the weight of the layer in just a bit. So this first layer here, we're going to call it pose change. So that's all we're going to use this for at the moment. We'll just call it pose one. And since I'm not doing any, I'm not performing any kind of loop, I'm not, there's no looping animation going on right now within this pose change, it's just one frame that's going to affect the overall animation throughout. So all I have to do is make sure that everything's selected, keyed, and ready to go. So one thing that helps me keep things organized as well is to right click on this box on the layer, and you can change the color of the box, which also changes the color of the keys, which is awesome. Right, so I'm going to do a quick pose change and then uh, we'll take a look at it. So here I have a pose that I changed a little bit. And here we can mute and unmute the layer so we can see what kind of change we've gone through. And with it on, I can hit play. And you can see it's kept the animation below. It's just adding to that, which you obviously have to be careful with because, look, I've created the... Uh, I put the arm straight like that, and bring it up a little bit more. And as the animation plays through it, it extends a little bit further than I'd like it to be. And even like we had it before, you can see the pop, pop every time. Because the animation below is not changing. I'm just changing the, the how the upper layer affects that change. And so it just created another layer of animation. And of course we see our base animation pose, another pose, and then mute that. And here's another stupid silly pose. Like, yeah, look at me, I'm about to fall over. And I could take each of these and show the client or my lead and say, hey, what do you think about that? Well, that's the original one. Yeah, okay, well, here's a new one. Boom, okay, that's cool. Oh my God, that's the best ever. So. If they're both, if all three of them are liked, then I can bake this one out, and I can bake this one out, and I can bake this one out into their separate frames. Haha, <laughs> well, there's that too. I can add everything together to produce something crazy. 
It's like I have a hand coming out of my chest. But So that's the power of animation layers when it comes to just creating a pose change. And next up, we'll talk about um, adding texture and iterations using the layers. So for the iteration and texture portion, I'm going to use this very simple jump cycle. And the point of this cycle is to, the point of this jump is to be a super responsive jump that you can be running through the world and have immediate response for the character. But that aside, I'm not going to get into how to create the jump, why I'm making certain uh, choices that I am, because that's a whole other video to deal with between Maya and Unreal. What I am going to use, or what I am going to use it for, is to create a couple of animations, show how I can add texture to it very quickly, and how I can show a couple of iterations that we can use in the game to add a bit of variety for the character, but to also get signed off on, I want it this way or I want it that way. So I'm going to pause, create a couple of animations, and be right back. All right, so I've created a couple of please don't judge me animations, and I've created the base, and then I have an, um, an iteration of another one and another iteration. So we have the initial jump cycle. It's very exaggerated, very um, uh, very responsive, and it's sort of like a giddy up, giddy up, and then we have a, another one, which is changing a lot of the poses, and then yet another one, which is changing it in a a much more bigger degree. Now, these are still additive, so yes, they're still maintaining the integrity of the basic animation. I'm just changing major poses to make it their own animation, not just making simple pose changes. I'm making complete animation changes overall, still having to deal with the cycles and, and whatnot, which is great. So, since these are just additive, let's create an override layer which ends up becoming kind of a pain, kind of. So I'm going to select all the objects, just go back to the beginning, and I don't want this this here to be an o on the override because I want this to maintain the timing of the jump. So come over here, say override, and we'll right click and say layer mode, override. Well, by default, it puts it back to the, the uh, default pose. By default, default pose. Which is fine, because that's what it should be doing, but it doesn't really help us to start from this pose and not just copying it and pasting it over. We want to start from this pose and just override everything that's underneath it in between. If Well, if I guess if that's what we want to do. So if you have pose to shelf, which is just a simple script you can find on Creative Crash, pose to shelf we can just create the recreate the first pose and just say pose then we'll click pose the shelf it'll put the pose to shelf and now we can hit override and just boom, put that pose back to normal quick and dirty select that go back to that select that select that so we can put the poses on either side correctly and now anything I do to this there is not going to be any sort of um, integrity maintained by the uh, into the with the base animation layer. So this is all going to be completely from scratch, which might be nice. You might not want to have any of the base animation showing up, and you want to just do it from scratch animation, which great. So what's one of the things that's very cool about the animation layers is being able to control the weight. Now. The base animation's still there. I'm just overriding it, and it acts like it doesn't exist. Now I can change the weight of that layer, so if I hit play, as I adjust the weight of this layer, it can basically say, well, it doesn't exist anymore, or maybe ex ex it exists at 50%, and so on. And you can key the weight of this layer all over time, so if I want it to be 100% at 1, and then 50 at 6, and then 2 at 12, or something like that, I can't. So that right there's the power of power of animation layers with iterations and and uh, changes and and all that stuff with overrides and additives and basically just to bake all the layers down you can just select everything hit merge oh and look at that because I had override on top obviously it completely <laughs> overrode everything else so be careful of that anyway there are there there we have animation layers amazing. 
Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Okay, well, there ends another video on tips and tricks of animation and so on. Happy to be here, happy to talk to you, and happy to teach you all of this stuff. So, thank you for choosing 3dmotive.com, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.